The brainstem consists of the medulla oblongata, the pons, and the midbrain. The medulla oblongata is the lower part of the brainstem and is continuous downwards through the foramen magnum. It continues with the spinal cord. The medulla oblongata has a lower part, which is called the closed part of the medulla. It's a continuation of the spinal cord and it contains a central canal that is the continuation of the central canal of the spinal cord. That's why it's called the closed part of the medulla. The upper part of the medulla here is open in the sense that it doesn't contain a central canal, but posteriorly it opens to form part of the floor of the fourth ventricle. This is the fourth ventricle of the brain that is roofed by the cerebellum. The floor is formed by the pons and the upper part of the medulla oblongata, which is the open part of the medulla oblongata. This is a ventral view, anterior view of the brainstem showing the medulla oblongata. You can see that downwards it merges with the spinal cord and upwards there is a clear sulcus separating it from the pons. Here is the pons and then the midbrain. The surface of the medulla oblongata is marked by several bulges and sulci. So anteriorly, we can see here that there is an anterior or a ventral median sulcus, and on either side, there are bulges or bumps, which are called the pyramids. These are the pyramids, and the pyramids contain the corticospinal fibers, and hence the name the cortico of the corticospinal tract, the pyramidal tract, because it passes through the pyramids of the medulla oblongata, and then these pyramidal fibers at the lower part of the medulla, they are going to decussate, obliterating the anterior median sulcus, the ventral median sulcus, at the decussation of the pyramid at the lower part of the medulla. On either side of the pyramid, there is another prominence, which is called the olive, and this is the site of the inferior olivary nucleus. The inferior olivary nucleus in section doesn't look like an olive, it looks like a crumpled bag, but because the bulge that it produces on the surface of the medulla is looks like an olive, that's why it's called the inferior olivary nucleus. More lateral to that is the inferior cerebellar peduncle that connects the medulla oblongata to the cerebellum. The cerebellum is connected to the brainstem via three, cerebellar, three pairs of cerebellar peduncles. A superior cerebellar peduncle that connects it with the midbrain, a middle cerebellar peduncle that connects it with the pons, and an inferior cerebellar peduncle that connects the cerebellum with the medulla oblongata. Posteriorly, there is a dorsal median sulcus, and there is a gracile fasciculus, and a cuneate fasciculus, and these are the continuation of the fasciculus gracilis and the fasciculus cuneatus lateral to it from the spinal cord. And each fasciculus ends superiorly as a tubercle here. So there is a gracile tubercle, and then rostrolateral to it is a cuneate tubercle, and these gracile and cuneate tubercle, they mark the location of the nucleus gracilis and the nucleus cuneatus. At the upper part of the dorsal median sulcus, there is an area here, which is the apex of this V-shaped lower boundary of the floor of the fourth ventricle. And this is this region here at the apex of this V-shaped boundary is called the obex. Here, the central canal of the medulla oblongata, it opens into the fourth ventricle. Lateral to the fasciculus cuneatus, the prominence in here is formed by tuberculum cinereum, and this marks the spinal tract and nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. Here, posteriorly, we can see these three bundles of white matter. These are the cerebellar peduncles, superior cerebellar peduncle coming from the midbrain. So this is a superior cerebellar peduncle, a middle cerebellar peduncle, which comes from the pons. This is the middle cerebellar peduncle. And medial to the middle cerebellar peduncle is the inferior cerebellar peduncle, which connects the medulla oblongata to the cerebellum. 
If we look at the floor of the fourth ventricle, we will see that it is diamond in shape, and that's why the region here is called the rhomboid fossa. There is a median sulcus that divides it into uh, two halves, and um, here at the lateral recess, this is the region of the lateral recess of the sulcus, we can see some collection of choroid plexus. This is the choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle that passes through the lateral recess of the fourth ventricle and uh, appears an, an anteriorly through a foramen, a lateral foramen of Lushka that connects the fourth ventricle with the subarachnoid space at the region of the cerebellopontine angle. Now in the floor of the fourth ventricle that is formed by the medulla oblongata, we can see that on either side of the median sulcus, uh, there are two triangles. There is a medial triangle here, which is called the hypoglossal trigon, and a lateral one, more laterally, and this is called the vagal trigon. The hypoglossal, the medial one, and the vagal, the lateral one, they mark the rostral end of the hypoglossal nucleus, the motor nucleus, the hypoglossal nucleus, and the vagal, dorsal vagal nucleus, the motor nucleus of the vagal vagus nerve. Here again, we can see the floor of the fourth ventricle, a median sulcus in here, and this is the region of the obex, and the hypoglossal trigon, more lateral to it, is the vagal trigon, and further laterally and superiorly, the area here uh, is the vestibular area. And you can see some transversely running fibers, and these demarcate the boundary between the medulla and the uh, pons. These transversely running fibers emerging from the median sulcus, these are the um, called the stria medullaris, and they are the fibers that arise from the arcuate nuclei, which are present in the, uh, near the pyramid of the medulla oblongata. In their way to these fibers, the fibers that constitute the stria medullaris, they pass through the inferior cerebellar peduncle in their way to the cerebellum. Here again, you can see these fibers, the stria medullaris, They should not be confused with the stria medullaris thalami. Stria medullaris thalami is located here between the superior and the medial superior surface of the thalamus and the medial surface of the thalamus. And these fibers, um, they connect between the septal area, which is located on the medial part of the frontal lobe, just inferior to the rostrum of the corpus callosum. So they connect the septal area, stria medullaris thalami, with the habenular nuclei, which are located here in the epithalamus, uh, just very close to the pineal gland. And uh, the stria medullaris thalami is, in fact, part of the limbic system of the brain. Here we can see some of the cranial nerves that are connected to the medulla oblongata. So in the area between the pyramid and the olive, are the rootlets of the hypoglossal nerve that is between the pyramid and the olive, the rootlets of the hypoglossal nerve. And then further laterally, here, lateral to the olive, this is the region of the olive, and lateral to the olive, the rootlets that are present in here are a series of rootlets uh, that constitute the accessory vagus and the glossopharyngeal nerve are located posterior to the olive. Now in the region between the medulla and the pons is the abducent nerve, six cranial nerve. And specifically, it's between the pyramid and the pons, the abducent nerve. Here is the region of the cerebellopontine angle again. And uh, you can see also between the pyramid, uh, between the medulla and the pons, uh, there are the fibers of the, um, emerging the fibers of the facial, which is more medial here, facial nerve, and then the vestibulocochlear nerve. So the fibers of the facial and vestibulocochlear nerves are located in here, and in between them is the nervous intermedius um, in addition, 
some of the choroid plexus can be seen here at the cerebellopontine angle as well. Also closely related, um, but a little bit down and behind the olive are the rootlets of the glossopharyngeal nerve. And of course, therefore, uh, below that are the uh, attachment of the rootlets of the vagus and the accessory nerves.